Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this consultation video series. We're gonna walk you through all kinds of homeowners across North America who've taken advantage of our free consultation. Where We're gonna walk you through all kinds of different tips and tools and tricks to go and effectively light your home with landscape lighting. So to get your own free video consultation, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and I'm gonna get back to you with your own customized video presentation. Or go check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or watch more of our great videos on how to install landscape lighting on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy. First up is a rubber mallet used for landscape lighting. It's the first step, you know, we've placed our lights, we've ran all our wire, uh, we know where we've got to bury all that. Now we're actually going to go and set the lights. Um, like I always talk about, I just want to point out here what, what the importance of getting something like a, uh, a rubber mallet is, especially if you're doing path lights, because path lights are, you know, they're going to sit this much higher and you want those to be nice and stable. And there's some things you can do. You know, I know some guys that actually pour um, a little bit of dry, like quick, quick, quick crete in the hole uh, that helps it, uh, you know, become more sturdy and solidify. Uh, the only thing with that is if you're not quite sure yet if that's where you want to have those lights, then that's a pretty permanent solution. So it's a good solution, but you want to make sure that's where you want to have your light. Um, and the other thing, I actually had a guy stop by today as we were working on the street and, you know, he had asked, you know, how much for a light uh, because we had a kid who just came and, you know, kicked our light and it snapped in the whole spike and everything broke and that's the you know why we always talk about getting a good quality fixture because you can tell when you're getting a good solid um, built ground stake as opposed to something cheap that you typically find off a big box store that you can you can snap like this so I mean if you can snap it like this what are the chances that's gonna stand up to a, a lawnmower a dog a kid whatever it might be so just spend the extra money and get something that's gonna that's gonna last um, and I would always say is when you're placing your light, you know, you want to you want to dig a small hole to get it started because you're going to have to dig that out anyway to put all your excess wire in there. Um, but grab an extra, grab a rubber mallet. We usually send these in with our do-it-yourself kits just because it's going to help solidify and get that light into the clay where it's going to become nice and sturdy now. Again, so it's not getting knocked over as easy and that's a fixture that's going to be in there permanently for a long period of time. Once you've got that in, then you can go and just simply screw your light in. And then you can come back afterwards, make your connections and bury everything. Now, in all honesty, I don't even really know what this is called, but you can go and get this at any home improvement store in the garden aisle. It's basically um, a long metal stick with two prongs on the end. That's great for pushing the wire a little bit deeper in the ground. So as you go and, and make your cuts or make your slits in the ground to get that wire in, you can use this uh, two pronged wire poker that we'll call it to just go and push that wire a little bit deeper into the ground to make sure it doesn't come up. Between using that and some extra landscape lighting stakes just, just to make sure, or sorry, landscape lighting staples just to make sure that wire doesn't come up. Uh, it's a great way to go and do this and I urge any of you that know what this is called to please email me and send me the details of it but our two pronged wire poker is a great way to get that wire in the ground. Yes, yeah, so when it comes time to bury in your wire just you know creating a simple trench again you don't have to go super deep because it's just low voltage wire uh, but just making your life a little easier by creating a trench. If you can get a tool something like this uh, works really help, really well to help push that wire down nice and deep into the ground and then if you need to just as an extra uh, measure just some landscape staples is not a bad idea to throw on the wire in a couple different places just to make sure it doesn't come up because if you go and put mulch up down on this uh, at a later date and you're raking that in sometimes you can snag the wire a simple landscape staple will help keep that wire down so that you're not pulling up those wires um, the advantage is if you're using good connectors you're, you don't have to worry about those pulling apart anyway, but if you want to help keep that wire buried, uh, landscape staples is a really easy way to do that. Another question I get asked all the time is, how do I get under a sidewalk? Now, uh, the first thing I'll say is whether it's a driveway or sidewalk, if you're doing any kind of concrete work, whether you think you're ever going to put in lighting or irrigation or whatever, put some kind of conduit under. Usually a, a piece of two inch PVC pipe or something like that just so that you can slide wire you can slide pipe you can do any of that 
uh, after the fact because it is way more of a pain in the butt to do it after the fact. Uh, so just slide some kind of sleeve in through. Uh, if it's a driveway, same thing because you never know and all the time uh, people are limited by what they can do because they never put a sleeve in. So, But if it's after the fact and uh, you don't have a sleeve and you need to get under a sidewalk, one of the things I'm going to recommend is, uh, is something like this. So this is called a um, different things, but it's called like a roto drill, uh, a roto drill bit. Um, you can go on Amazon. This is like a 15, maybe $20 uh, drill bit. You can get a 24 or a 36 inch one. Um, and basically it just goes in that, goes in any drill and you can just basically drill your way under. So we've already done this one, so I'm not gonna uh, take the time here to, to actually do it, but basically all you need to do is dig back a bit of a trench and then just, um, just drill away uh, and if your if your sidewalk is more than two feet you might have to drill you know halfway through on this side and then do the same thing on the other side and then just drill through on the other side meet in the middle and then you can easily slide your your pipe through uh, we've tried lots of different methods this is easily uh, the easiest one that we've come across and again it's a 15 20 dollar bit you can go on Amazon Google um, or Amazon and search Yard Butler, Roto Drill, and you'll find something like this. The King Innovation Instalite. So this is a great tool that we use to go and demo different types of lights to find out what light is gonna look best where. So all it is, it's a very simple battery operated pack that just takes eight AA batteries. And then what you can do with it is you can actually go and plug in your light, whatever light it is, whether it be a path light, a wash light, a wall light, or an accent light, you can go and just plug that into your Instalight and you can go walk around your property and test out all the different areas that you're thinking of lighting and seeing which lights look best in which location and where you wanna position those lights to get the best effect that you're looking for. It's a super, super easy tool that comes in all our do-it-yourself kits as well as our try it before you buy it offers where you can go and now test out these lights, feel the quality, see how they're gonna look before you go and make any big decisions on your landscape lighting project. And so once you've got your lights selected again, uh, uh, the next step is really just going to start to place your lights um, where you think they're gonna look best. You're gonna wanna come back at night anyway and see how they look when they're actually lit up. Um, but usually what I do just to get started, um, I've got my lights, I've kind of placed them everywhere around the property that I'm gonna bury them. Uh, or place them, then I grab my shovel, I just take a, a small hole so that I can get that ground stake started. Um, and then to make sure it's really secure, especially with a, a path light. And that's why you just wanna get something that's got a good, good ground stake. I mean, this is an eight inch, super durable, uh, super heavy duty ground stake. And that's why we use stuff like FX Luminaire and all our um, all our projects. You get asked all the time, is there other brands out there? And of course there is, but um, we only offer what I know that I can guarantee and that I've worked with and that um, is really good bang for your buck. So that's why we install these because the little things like that, you just get a super duty ground stake, you get a really durable light. And then I go around and I take my rubber mallet uh, to really make sure, really make sure I get that light nice and secure, especially for path light because they are a little bit taller. Uh, they're more prone to get knocked over and stuff. So I want to make sure that's nice and secure. So with my ground stake, I'm just going to pound that in, make sure I get it as level as possible. Take my fixture now and screw it in there. And then I'm going to kind of step back and make sure that it's, you know, it's nice and straight um, and leave an extra, uh, a nice little hole by the light so that I can do all my wiring connections, bury that up, uh, come back at night, see how it looks. And then tomorrow I'll come back and we'll just bury everything. But uh, pretty simple, just get those lights placed, use a rubber mallet, uh, it's gonna save you a lot of headache and to make sure that light gets a lot more durable. There's one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the up light. So sometimes if you have an up light like this, that's close to an area where people are gonna be walking, um, it's not necessarily gonna be pointing in their in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle, we're gonna use something called a hex baffle. It basically just slides underneath the cap of your light. It goes over the lens, or sorry, over the light and under the lens and snaps back on. Um, and then all that's gonna do is just deflect the light that's being 
uh, maybe portrayed that way so that somebody looking down, they're not gonna see a light shining right up in, their, in your eyes. So this is a great, uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video just like that one, send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.